Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for uh, being here today with us. Uh, yes, sir. We had a, an awesome start of the event, Connect the Future. Uh, we learned about Panorama ID. Uh, and today we're going to talk about some more interesting information around Lodomy and the future of data and its third party data doom. All right. So let's get going. So today we're going to talk about. Um, what's new and next in data. And a question that we get every day, uh, I think we even dream about it, is third-party data doomed? Um, so we're gonna learn about that. My name is Sebastian Yaffe. I'm uh, MD for LATAM and US Hispanics at Lodomy. And I have a couple of amazing colleagues with me, uh, Ruby and Ryan, do you want to introduce yourselves? Hi folks, Ruby Brandon, uh, out of the New York office, head of data products. Hey, I'm Ryan Madigan, also out of New York. I'm the director of Data Marketplace Supply. Thanks, Ruby and Ryan. Looking forward to having a, a great talk today. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, so let, let's get going. Um, so what's coming up in, in, in data? Uh, what's new? What's next? What, what's the future? Um, as, as we know, uh, this, these past 10 months have been... Uh, completely outrageous and with many, many different news and uh, exciting news and complex news, right? Things that, that scare us, uh, things that are related to change, evolution. We see this as a positive situation uh, where we are able to finally move forward uh, into new frontiers and into uh, uh, updating the technology that we are using across the globe uh, to track audiences and to build audiences. So we see this as an exciting time. Um, one of the questions that we get asked mostly every day is, uh, is third party data doomed? Um, and we believe the answer is no. It's actually, a, it's a rebirth uh, and it's a, a time, a very exciting time to be working with uh, around data uh, and third party data is gonna definitely thrive and, and there's a, a couple of reasons behind this because, uh, you know, third party data has always been vital. Um, first party data is obviously very valuable and, and it's your biggest digital asset. Uh, but when you enhance it and enrich it with third party data is when you're able to learn more about your customers, you're, uh, you're able to, um, to understand more about your potential clients. And you can go into a, a, a different level of scale and depth. We believe uh, third-party data will be evolving, changing, uh, and we see it as a positive outlook uh, in the future. So one of the things that I want to, to mention, which is very important, this is like an alert that you get on your phone, is that third-party cookies is not the same as third-party data. Uh, this is something that uh, we should be uh, writing next to our desk, next, next to our computer in a post-it because there's a lot of confusion. Uh, third-party data, sorry, third-party cookies is what Chrome announced in the beginning of the year and what Safari and Firefox has now been limiting for uh, a couple of years now uh, is the ability to collect third-party cookies, okay? Now, third-party data is data that is going to keep thriving, being alive, because it's not comprised only of third-party cookies. Third-party cookies are only a small portion or a portion of third-party data. Um, we, we have other ident identifiers uh, that help build third-party data, one of those identifiers will be, now that you've seen that we launched Panorama ID, Panorama ID is going to be adding to the third-party data that we are going to be putting in the market. So third-party data is alive and well, and, and we see a bright, bright future for it. Now, what is the market saying? Um, we found this really interesting study by uh, Winterberry, uh, published by uh, eMarketer in, in partnership with the IAB, and so it talks about um, 
how will the change in support of third party audience uh, affect the use of data? If you see uh, around 37, 35% of people are working on identity resolution solutions, which Lodomi is one of the partners that can help you greatly around that. Uh, the other one is uh, building third party uh, industry groups, again, to build identity resolutions. And another one is how to build second party data relationships, which we, we believe is extremely uh, interesting and it will thrive in the coming months and years. So second party data has always been um, an option where two companies share data with each other, their first party data assets in order for uh, in a non-competing situation, leverage each other's data. Uh, we have a solution around this called PDX and we encourage you uh, to jump on board and see uh, the opportunities that might arise between sharing second party data between two non-competing companies. Uh, for example, it can be a retailer and it can be an insurance company or a bank that share their, their client's data uh, and do um, co-branded or uh, campaigns on each side related to the valuable data assets that uh, each one has. Um, so again, in coming around this, uh, we see a flight to quality in terms of third-party data and transparency. And we're gonna talk about this uh, more in depth. Uh, second and third-party data uh, are still alive uh, and they are going to thrive in the coming months and years. Um, first-party data is always important and very valuable, but needs to be enriched, uh, enhanced, uh, and basically what it allows is for you, when you see a client and you're seeing your view of that customer, uh, what you need is a panorama, right? So you need to see the full view of the customer uh, by, and by enriching with second and third party data and basically taking out the guesswork um, of the decisions that you're doing. And all of this can live in a cookie-less world. We already had the solution for it. Uh, Panorama ID, e even though there's still third-party data out there, uh, sorry, third-party cookies out there, uh, we will be uh, using that obviously, but where it's limited and there's a lot of places where it's limited already, Safari and Firefox, we will be working with the Panorama ID. So uh, long story short, um, we see, we don't see uh, a problem, we see an opportunity. Now this opportunity brings to the market also transparency. So evolution means transparency. So like you, like you have the nutrition labels on the, on the back of the different um, products that you buy in the supermarket, you're gonna be able to do that also with third and second party data. And Lodomy is in the process of, of uh, transforming that so that you can see the who, the what, the how, and the where uh, basically all the different ingredients and how those ingredients, those raw ingredients are cooked. And then uh, what becomes a product is a product uh, or a data set that has transparency to the different stakeholders, analyzing how to use it for what, for what specific uh, reasons or campaigns, insights, analytics, enrichment. So it's gonna give marketers and agencies and publishers a much more refined uh, data set and a much more quality uh, data set um, to work off. In summary, we, we see a bright future uh, where you know, the old terms uh, are going to change. First, second, third party data, maybe there's a new type of data name that's coming. Uh, but you shouldn't be uh, just looking at if it's first, second, and third. I, we think the lines are going to blur. Uh, data enrichment is definitely a must. Uh, and it's when you combine your data sets with second and third party data, which is what Lodomy does. So this is building lookalike modelings, insights, analytics, uh, and connectivity. We see uh, an open web, 
uh, that is people-based and privacy first. Um, and that's where we see the future uh, being very bright uh, and we embrace this. Um, thank you so much. Now I'll pass it over to Ruby uh, so that she can continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian and everyone for joining us in this talk track. I'd like to now welcome you to the evolution of the Lodemy Data Exchange and what we're up to next. At Lodemy, we care about data quality and are invested in elevating the quality of our data. We've, um, we have embarked on this journey with the IAB through their data compliance program, where we aim to make our data understandable, consistent, and transparent. Data as defined by the IAB accurately assigns demographic, geographic, and behavioral attributes to an individual, for example, like our COO, Mike. Um, the compliance standard establishes a baseline level of transparency for our data buyers uh, in the following aspects, data collection, processing, modeling, all of which inform data quality and applicability regardless of a bias use case. Here we achieve scalability across the Media Data Exchange. Now, what does this mean for the LDX as all of you know it? Our LDX taxonomy will undergo an uplift aligning with the IAB standards. Here we will rename, recategorize, and rebrand our taxonomy where applicable under the industry standard, the IAB industry standard, um, aligned with categories such as demographic, demographics, which we are already in market with, followed by interest and intent. Our goal here is to create an easy to understand and improved user experience with a descriptive taxonomy for all buyers. Here are the three main categories of data demographic, where we're already in market with. We will be introducing new precision panorama hierarchies that are high on target for both the interest and intent categories, rolled out by industry vertical. Now, some of these industry verticals fall across all of these categories. So let's take the auto vertical as an example. We'd like to know what 34 to 45 year old females are interested in and where they, when they intend to buy a car. Now, what about sellers? They can go to an auto retailer and sell data specific to their industry and vertical. In summary, our goals with Precision Panorama are threefold. Data quality, where we'll align with the IAB standard powered by declared data sets, coupled with data provider validation. Precise targeting, where our taxonomy will be descriptive with all the data points and categorizations needed that will assist our buyers in precise audience building at the attribute level and buying on activation platforms. Now our analytics will be use case driven, focused on insights on a consumer's persona and storytelling to give our clients meaningful information to accurately identify their target audience. On the insights front, here's a sneak peek on Panorama Persona Insights. Now, um, I'm going to throw out a caveat here. Uh, this is still very much in a design phase, and we will be soliciting feedback from our um, clients. So we may hit any of you up next. If you're interested, please go ahead and reach out. We would love to get your feedback. All right. So wouldn't it be good or great if we understood our audiences, our consumers at the persona level, all in one place, and perhaps have the ability to filter across markets as we go through the iterative process of building and analyzing our audiences. Let's take a look. Here we display key metrics for this audience we've built, like scale and population, reach by devices, the location of these audiences, standard demographic information like age, gender, income. We showcase some of the top behaviors of an audience, its overlaps and composite index. With this audience, what is what this audience is in market for? What is what are their intent? What do they watch on the telly? Um, what's their news consumption? With all of this data, you're able to form a story and understand the persona of the audience you've built, and refine this audience as needed to fulfill your various use cases. If you're not reaching the right target audience or the right persona. All right, that is that's. It for me. Next up, Ryan, who will be diving into a little more detail on what's coming next with data. 
All right, great. Thanks so much, Ruby. And thanks again uh, to everyone for joining us today. I know uh, we've all been sitting on back-to-back -back Zoom calls and are getting a little burnt out. Uh, so definitely really appreciate you making the time to, to spend the day with us. Um, so needless to say, there's a lot happening right now. Uh, to Sebastian's uh, talk, you know, a ton changing, a uh, real kind of evolution uh, across the ecosystem right now. But, you know, we see it as a real opportunity. Uh, and then to, to Ruby's uh, presentation, you know, it just kind of gives you a little bit of an insight into where we're heading and how we're kind of taking these changes uh, head on. So kind of what I want to jump in is, is what this means to you. Um, so at the very start, uh, make the most of your data. Uh, I'm definitely a little biased because I work on the supply side, uh, but anytime I talk to anybody, uh, I always like to stress that your data is incredibly valuable. Um, and you should really, you know, there's a ton you can do with it, a lot of opportunities. Uh, so for example, if you're one of our DNP partners right now, are you tapped into the LBX? Are you providing uh, a global data footprint to us? Uh, if not, are, are you a branded data provider? Um, these are just a few of the questions that I'd kind of like you guys to ask yourself as we're going through the presentation. Um, and I think even beyond that, uh, sometimes when we're speaking with people, you know, we get the impression that they feel that they don't have a place to fit in. You know, maybe they don't have a hundred million records or they don't have a global footprint, uh, but that's certainly not the case. You don't have to have this huge amount of data. Uh, I think to Sebastian's point earlier, uh, thanks to kind of our second party data marketplace, uh, there's a ton of opportunity for everybody. So for example, if you have a really unique data set, uh, I'd love to hear more about it and see how we might be able to work with you. Um, there's probably a couple of different people on this call right now that may have exactly what the other person's looking for. So if we can help kind of act as that in between and, and you know allow that data to transfer in a privacy compliant way, uh, we'd love to play a part. Beyond that, don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, I know it sounds very silly and very simple, uh, but it goes a long way. I, I think for any of our data partners, uh, if you're in the system right now, maybe you see upwards of 5,000 unique segments, uh, but we can actually do a lot more than what you see. So for example, if you're hoping for something that's not available right now, whether it be a certain geo or a certain type of audience, um, do exactly that. Make sure you reach out and, and let us know. Uh, there's a very good chance that we can have it custom built for you. Uh, and even if we don't have it, we're fortunate in that we have a tremendous amount of, of amazing partners that we work with. Uh, so we're happy to reach out on your behalf and see what we can do to make those audiences come to life. Even further than that, right now, things are different. Um, I, I think this is a real opportunity for everyone to kind of be creative, to stand out, to try something new. So uh, to my point above, you know, if you're hoping to combine audience X with audience Y and, and create something brand new, um, let us know. In the end, you know, there's no one that's going to know your customer better than you. There's no one that's going to know your data set better than you. And, and we want to hear about it. We want to hear how we can kind of step in and hopefully build something for you that, you know, that you've only dreamed of maybe, or you haven't really had that chance to do just yet. Um, because again, I think there's a ton of opportunities and a ton of ways that we can really make that happen for you. Um, and I think on that subject, um, lots of new audiences. So just to kind of give you an idea on a few of the things that we're working on right now, uh, some of these new, some coming soon. Um, and again, some of these are, are very much indicative of the current climate we're going through, uh, but I want you to think of it as much more than just right now and kind of what could be uh, as we kind of head forward. So something like streaming networks uh, at its simplest form, if you know, I'm a Disney plus, uh, I think it would be really helpful to know, hey, these are somebody, uh, these are people that are regularly using Netflix or regularly using Hulu. Uh, but I think there's again, a lot more to this. So kind of looking at this next, uh, this next chunk, the idea of food delivery, um, you know, if I'm a DoorDash, for example, or an Uber Eats, I actually see a tremendous about, amount of value in knowing if you know somebody that, that I'm working with, um, I'm sorry, somebody that I'm interested in, in reaching uh, is spending a lot of time in front of Netflix right now, maybe more than ever before. You know, If these kind of uh, users or these audiences are spending more time at home, it really means that they're probably that much more likely to kind of take advantage of some of these food delivery systems. Uh, so again, just the idea of, of kind of reaching people in new and unique ways. Um, and it goes for a lot more than that. Something like Fresh Direct, for example, uh, I would use it here and there, but not that much. But since coming home, uh, I, I order from them almost once a week. And, and the way it kind of works, I'll kind of start my order at the beginning of the week. Uh, it'll come by the end of the week. But over that course of that week, I'm regularly opening the app and adding new items to the mix. So for example, if you're a CPG brand, I see this as a huge opportunity. If you can put an ad directly in front of me, whether it's you know while I'm on uh, my computer, whether it's on my phone, if I see something and I haven't seen it before, or I haven't tried it before, uh, it's really easy for me to immediately kind of pop over to that Fresh Direct app, kind of add it to my cart. And next thing you know, that Friday it shows up on my doorstep 
Um, and you know, you've hit somebody in a way that maybe you never would have before. Um, and then beyond that, things like online shopping, uh, obviously Amazon, eBay, they're huge, huge marketplaces. Uh, but I think there's a ton of value, maybe even for kind of the smaller retailers or the small e-commerce shop. You know, if somebody is, is spending a lot of time on Amazon right now, uh, obviously people are being very conscious when it comes to how much they're spending, when they're spending, uh, but they're definitely spending more online. So if we know somebody's spending online, uh, I think that's a value. You know, you could say, hey, I know somebody's comfortable with doing this. They're regularly spending time uh, online. Let's try to get in front of them and, and kind of reach them that same way. Um, beyond that, you know, a, a lot of other categories that I think are really exploding, things like home fitness, uh, remote work, home improvement, and, and DIY. I feel like every other day I see somebody on Instagram that built a bookshelf or is working on something new. Um, people definitely have more time than they did in the past when it comes to, you know, commutes and weekends. So definitely some, I think the real opportunity is kind of mixing and matching some of these together uh, with some of your traditional audiences and finding something new. Um, another one that we're working on right now is financial durability. So for example, if you're an auto manufacturer and you're after people of a high net worth, uh, typically that would have been a really nice connection for a luxury vehicle. Uh, but right now, unfortunately, you know, you may reach somebody that has a high net worth uh, but maybe they're a small business owner that's going through some tough times. So the last thing you really want to do is be like a Mercedes Benz and put an ad in front of somebody that's going through kind of a rough go. Um, you know, not only does it make a crummy experience for that user, uh, but it's also a waste of impression from an advertising standpoint. So you really want to make sure that if you are putting ads out in front of people, uh, that they're the right people, the people that are still willing to spend right now. And, you know, again, are going to have that genuine connection. Um, beyond that, uh, another big chunk that I, I think is worth mentioning just the idea of uh, some of our new audiences for LATAM, US Hispanics, uh, some expansions across our precision data. Uh, this has been a really big push for Sebastian since coming on board. Uh, but I think, you know, to date, we were always able to kind of hit these regions, uh, but we kind of approached it in a global way. And, and the bottom line, I think, comes down to the fact that, you know, the way I engage with certain brands and products is going to be a little different than Sebastian, who's in Buenos Aires. And I think it's really important to kind of separate those two and, and say, hey, you know, the global data will work, but when you can kind of have that unique connection that's really specific to a region, uh, it's going to go above and beyond. And, and that's something that uh, I think we're going to continue to roll out and really focus and, and hone in in the coming months. Uh, and even further, I think you guys will see a handful of new brand of providers in the coming months as well pop into our platform that uh, I, I'm hoping everyone will be really excited about. Um, another item, point of interest. Uh, obviously, point of interest has always been really important, uh, but I think it's more important than ever. Uh, somebody like myself, I, you know, I would make the commute uh, from Long Island into New York every day. I've been doing it forever. Uh, I kind of had a standard routine, you know, maybe before work, I'd pop in at the coffee shop or I'd grab something uh, to eat. And, and now the fact of the matter is my routine is very different. Uh, so I think it's really important to kind of understand not only kind of where people are and, and what they're doing, but, but kind of more so kind of uh, understanding the difference between kind of what was and what is. So for example, just going after somebody that maybe was a coffee drinker isn't going to quite be enough anymore. I think the, the real opportunity is kind of understanding, all right, these are people that are out about, these are people that likely walk into our stores and, and engage. Um, and, and again, just kind of getting a better understanding on, on people's activities in general. Um, on the same subject, similar to LATAM, uh, we're fortunate enough to, to launch new branded partnerships uh, with AdSquare and Tomoko. Uh, both of which you'll see in the platform in the coming months. So something I think will be really of, of a big value uh, to all of our DMP partners. So uh, something we're, we're definitely excited about. Um, and then beyond that, uh, CBD and THC. Uh, it's rare that we kind of have an opportunity to bring a brand new data set uh, to the market, but that's kind of how I feel about this. Uh, I know when it first came up, uh, one of my coworkers made the joke, like, how does this work? Can I, can I buy one weed, please? And, and in theory, Yes, we can target somebody who is a cannabis user, uh, but I think that's a really small piece of, of the big puzzle uh, when you kind of look at it, because something like CBD, for example, right now, uh, at least where I am in New York, it's readily available everywhere, whether you're at a grocery store or a CVS, um, it's hitting all different verticals, you know, health and wellness. Uh, I mean, there's bath bombs that have CBD that just kind of help you hopefully relax at the end of a tough week. So um, there's a ton of opportunity there. And, and I think... Um, we're fortunate right now because we, we had a handful of new partners uh, similar to the above that we'll be bringing on the platform uh, in the coming months. So the likes of SafeReach, uh, Philo, Next Tech, by, powered by New Frontier, 
uh, all of which you'll see some of their branded uh, data coming into the system. Um, and I, I don't know, they're some of the most creative, most motivated teams I think uh, we've had the chance to work with this past year. And they are they're, have very big plans. So um, I, I think some of the stuff beyond even that existing footprint, uh, just the idea of how they're combining all, all audiences. So for example, uh, somebody that's interested in THC, but also an outdoor enthusiast. Um, kind of to that, that previous slide, I, I think this could be a really cool opportunity for a lot of partners to get creative, to kind of step out of the box and, and try something new. Um, so definitely something that, that uh, we're excited to see how it kind of performs and, and how it works for everyone across the board. Um, great. Uh, I, I think that's, that's it from our end. Uh, obviously, we covered a lot of information uh, over the course of the presentation, but if anyone has any questions, uh, absolutely do not hesitate to reach out. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, we want to make sure uh, that we're playing an active role uh, across all of our partners day to day. So whether it's a new audience, whether it's playing a role and, and kind of uh, being part of that, that uh, panel taxo that's being rolled out, or again, kind of just working with the likes of Sebastian, who's building something huge across uh, our LATAM region, um, we'd, we'd love to hear from you and we're excited for what's to come. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bye -bye. everyone. Bye.